welcome back to another episode of Physician Efficiency Series on my channel. I'm Dr. Nasser, current PGY3 in internal medicine, moving on to becoming a hospitalist in the state of Florida. In only a few months, we're here today with an episode about chat GPT models. We're going to answer the question, which model is best for what tasks? I've used different AI tools to go over the very comprehensive document put out by OpenAI recently regarding the capabilities of each of their models. And I cross-checked those with what physicians are using these models for and what they have been reviewing these models on Reddit and other communities online and came up with this to tell you which one is best for what. So let's dive into it. This is up to date as of mid 2025. So that will be in May of 2025. And just making sure that when I present these lectures to you, you also do your due diligence and use your professional judgment when using these tools. I've done my best to make sure these are all evidence-based and peer reviewed. The AI tools are here to augment our abilities as physicians and make our day-to-day -day life better and faster and help us focus on our doctor-patient relationships. But they're not here to replace our clinical expertise. So what we talk about in this video is not which one is going to do your job for you. It's actually which one is going to augment and help you do your job better. So the most important question is which tool is you know best for what task? Because if you don't, your efficiency will be impacted. You will waste a lot of time and your accuracy will certainly decrease. Understanding the model itself it really helps you delegate the tasks better. In this new day and age, you're going to be a delegator. Before, you were delegating a lot of the patient, the nurses, the, the administration, the insurance companies. Now, you have to also delegate how the AI tools are going to function and you really use them for what they are. So let's get into it. GPT-40. This is OpenAI's most advanced model. By the way, this picture is creepy. I saw AI generated. Gamma AI is an amazing presentation tool. I'm not sponsored, but I've been using it for these presentations. You can give it a try. So it is the most advanced model. It is very good as understanding and generating text from a lot of different sources, images, audio, video you can put in it is able to analyze very deeply and generate tests. So most of the things that we do in terms of clinical analysis and augmentation can be done by GPT-40. But we still need to make sure that we verify everything. You can trust, but verify. These are very sophisticated assistants, but they are not autonomous decision makers. But let's move on to GPT-4 Turbo. So this one is made really to break down very extensive, long, documents and summarize them for you you could use it in doing research you can draft very comprehensive discharge summaries for patients that have been in the hospital for days and days so it's very fast in terms of breaking down these long documents and large larger documents and so you really should be using these for those tasks not for clinical augmentation and gpt 3.5 is very fast but it's not there for your clinical help it is really a administrative AI. So if you were to create referral letters, templates, ICD-10 lookups, really like quick, small little tasks to help you through the day, this is the one to go with. Now, of course, we want to integrate GPT in our workflow. So let's talk about it and some examples. Patient education, you want to create materials for education, highly recommend 3.5 there. Documentation assistance, if you want to summarize things, GPT-4, Turbo, and just understanding the critical limitations of AI in terms of diagnosis, even though you can use GPT-4.0, which is the best at helping augment your diagnosis and treatment, you need to be careful and always verify the results as a physician. Now, let's say you had a GPT-4.0, you're seeing a patient in the ER, they're having chest pain, and you ask for an EKG, you look at it yourself, and you have an understanding of what this looks like, then you take a picture of it, you put in OpenAI and just want to see what happens. And I've done that before. I just see if OpenAI, ChatGPT is able to actually pick up on these. And sometimes it can pick up some things like peak T waves or tell you, oh, this could be related to this and that. But again, I've done this so many times and I've seen it so many times being wrong. So I looked online and there's a lot of studies that are showing that AI accuracy when it comes to reading images is very poor compared to human specialists. So again, this is another thing. Do not use this as a standalone interpretation. But 
if you want to be curious to see how they're evaluating on things that they can point out to you you can have that there but always verify always use your own clinical judgment when you're putting images and not just ecgs any medical images x-rays cts all those things remember we talked about in previous video when you use you put a, for example an x-ray in there depending on what quality of your picture the angle of your picture and the image there's so many variabilities if you put the interpretation of the picture that a radiologist read and sometimes they could make mistakes then all of your data will be affected by that interpretation as well so it's very important to not only if and even when the radiologist reads an image for you you also read that and then make sure that the image really goes with the interpretation of the radiologist sometimes they may not comment on certain things if you didn't ask for them to look for it so those are little details that you need to be careful that's why images i would not really recommend to use chat gpt but if you were to use it know about the, a lot of limitations there now in terms of the gpt4 turbo you have a lot of clinical documents the patient has been in the hospital people have seen him remember gpt4 turbo is really good really fast you can break it down and summarize it for you create a discharge summary but it is a draft okay it is not the final version you need to go through every single thing that this writes okay and generates make sure those are accurate make sure they didn't take out important pieces of information because these ai tools have mind of their own right they can do and analyze this findings in a certain way and can get biased in certain direction they can create and fill up parts of your documentation by creating new generated ai interpretations so you can use it as a draft but again it's no way this is final and should be used now there are some ai tools that do not have this generative kind of ability to understand and think on their own and do those things and they will not also pull onto outside data but we're going to we have a video on that i wanted to really talk about the abilities of notebook lm because one of those things a bonus for this video is that if you ever use notebook lm all of the data that you put in notebook lm will be basically the data you give it it will never pull on to data that you don't put in there some of these tasks actually may be better off done using notebook lm if you have again a de-identified version of these making sure that you stick to the hipaa compliance all right moving on let's talk about cost efficiency now dpt 3.5 is the free version the interface the chat gpt interface is pretty it's free everyone can use and the api if you were to use it in a workflow like a create like a zap or a make an a n workflow the api is very low cost but again remember this type this version is made for simple administrative tasks and not for clinical analysis gpt4 turbo is pretty fast optimized for extensive de-identified documents but you have to review and then gpt4 o the main version is the best one to help you with complex reasoning multimodal input again clinical interpretation needs your judgment but making sure that you use it would be the best so that if i would recommend using this one for those complex reasoning if you are to and make sure you're not on any of the other types always add, you can look at the bottom it says which version you're using and the common pitfalls that everybody has these pitfalls are diagnostic over reliance over relying on what chat gpt model tells you about a definite diagnosis never do that we have a video on 10 personalization prompts for chat gpt for physicians that one we definitely we tell the ai that hey never give me definitive diagnosis always tell me the facts and lay it out so i can make be the final decision maker and the doctor delegator of this patient data security very important we have a video on hipaa compliance the standard chat you purchase is not hipaa compliant inherently but you can use it in a hipaa compliant way if you haven't watched this video you can go ahead and watch that video on how you can de-identify da your data before putting it into gpt and what prompts you can give it to make sure you didn't miss anything but if your institution, for example, is able to purchase that education chat GPT EDU version, then it could be HIPAA compliant. And there are some, they have it, what they call the BAA is in that video. That if they give you that version, it may be HIPAA compliant. You may be able to use that without having to de-identify personally. Image interpretation, we talked about it. Again, reinforcing that do not rely on the image interpretation. Those are still under development and they cannot and should not be substituted for expert judgment. A model capabilities mismatch very important in terms of deep clinical analysis do not use that regular free model 3.5 for clinical 
analyses you're going to make more mistakes and you may it may just close your eyes to certain aspects of a case that it's just not a good way to go ai in medicine is really about balancing the potential with prudent practice the best physicians today in this ai age are the best delegators they delegate these tasks very intelligently verify all the data very critically reading it and apply their own expertise to whatever ai is producing now always prioritize your patient centered care and evidence based practice and do not over rely on these tools so if you stay till the end of the video with me thank you so much guys i really appreciate your being here i really would like you to join the conversation i want us as a community to talk and be able to really comment on these things changes that are happening in our healthcare every day there's news of new developments in the world of ai that can affect us as a community and our patients and our lives and this community is for you guys i have made a free physician ai model cheat sheet for this quick presentation and i posted it on my patreon channel if you want to visit i highly encourage you to do that and don't forget to subscribe guys disclaimer always on these videos that i create these are all for educational purposes there's no medical advice here and ai tools should be used responsibly under qualified healthcare professionals supervision patient data privacy and security always is paramount so thank you so much for